cartoon show, and welcome back to our Clarence 10 year anniversary celebration. And since this is our first uh, Clarence video blog, Jared, what are we going to talk about today? Any ideas? <sighs> this is going to be kind of a pain for me to make this video. I should say for us to make this video because we're going to talk about some of the most outrageous moments. But before we get started, we do want to say that not every single moment will be talked about in this video because we have a short amount of time and because there's so many episodes that they made, uh, specifically over 100. So we're not going to go over all episodes in this video. We're going to split this episode into three sections. One for the first season, another for the second, and the last part for the third. And we're going to get started with Season 1, episode number 6, titled, Clarence Gets a Girlfriend. And to say the least, this one is about, well, Clarence trying to get a girlfriend after a cute interaction that happened one time. I believe that in this episode, or in this scene, Clarence and his friend Sumo are in a clothing store, and Clarence is trying out different outfits for his uh, first date. But unfortunately, he wears this, and... Uh, Let's just say that Sumo uh, was a bit shocked that Clarence was wearing that. In episode later, in season one, episode seven, Jeff's new toy, we wanted to choose this scene, not just because it was kind of wacky in a way, but we also wanted to choose this one because it we think that it had something to do with cool stop motion animation where Clarence ends up telling a made up story that he made about him accidentally breaking Jeff's toy being caused by, wait for it, a raccoon. Maybe we should move on to the next episode, which is uh, the eighth episode in the first season being Dinner Party. In this one, Clarence goes to a dinner party at Brain's house, and Brain's parents, his mom and dad, like to have everything in a sort of like a special sort of way, and they don't want anything to be screwed up. Chad becomes so bored of out of his mind that he goes to the kids, especially Clarence, and decides to have his own kind of fun, so to speak. Including uh, putting a vacuum cleaner, cleaner nozzle on his bottom. And Chad, you might want to pull up your pants because we see, because I'm starting to see something a little more than the back of the bicycle you're trying to trying to ride. Let's just uh, go ahead and move on to Honk in season one, episode nine. Why don't we? And the reason why yeah. I uh, we. I chose most of this episode is mainly because of Clarence's hijinks that he did with the horn throughout the entire thing. Yeah, and then in the episode Nature Clarence, uh, why don't you explain this one? Because I know that this one all <laughs> this one really made you laugh when you were rewatching it or when you first watched it. Let's just say that. Oh well, there's something on my TV screen that we'll have to talk about here in just a second. But um, to say the least, um, let's just say that. Josh Maverick, he ends up in a terrible situation where he's stuck on a cliff. So Clarence, Jeff, and Percy decide to perform a human chain to try and save him. So, pretty heroic and all that stuff, right? Until the human chain breaks and Clarence lands on Josh's face and he goes, by accident. I'll, I will give Clarence points for this. At least he did say, excuse me. So, at least he was being polite, and he did learn his manners. And then, uh, in the episode, The Forgotten, uh, there is a character that's supposed to be like, uh, like a version of Charlie Brown in, in the Clarence universe, I guess? Fittingly named Brady Brown. And it's kind of like, um, a Charlie Brown episode in some sort of a way. But uh, let's just say that I just saw Clarence um, near fence. Let, let's just put it that way, okay? Then and in the episode Belson's Sleepover, Belson did sort of, sort of some sort of nod to uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is a movie. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a feature film that's like made from the seventies or something like that. And at some point near the end of the episode, Belson's waving his chainsaw around and it's supposed to be a nod to the character Leatherface from the movie where he does the same thing at the end of the movie but let's just get this out of the way if you guys are curious about that movie don't don't just just don't watch it we're not gonna show any pictures of the movie or anything here just 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 don't and then um in season one episode number 39 we have detention the scene we're talking about in well today is uh, 
Clarence's uh, show and tell, or in this case, his show and smell. I hope some of the kids brought a can of air freshener. And then a few episodes later, in season one, episode 43, this one was a bit ridiculous, and let's just hope that you weren't doing something crazy before it, because Tuckered Boys was about quite a hallucination. Basically, this one is about Clarence Simo and Jeff trying to find a meteor shower or something like that during the night. And they stay up late, and they don't get any sleep, and they start to hallucinate, huh? Yeah, but, um, not to tell you too much about it, but the ending did kind of startle me a little bit. Not gonna say what happened or whatever. And then finally, in Season 1, Episode 46, we have Brain Ho. And this one is... <laughs> this one's... And to say the least, uh, Clarence, Sumo, Jeff, and Brain, they play a board game. They do so in a very bad rainstorm. Uh-huh. And let's just say that in one scene when they try to rescue Brain, Clarence becomes a freaking mermaid. Moving on to season two, we got the 22nd episode, Classroom. Long story short, it's basically just a day in the life of the classroom that Clarence, Sumo, and Jeff are in. And we kind of see a little uh-huh. bit, like, we go to like 10 or 11 minutes about we just have a normal chill-out time and just see how things go at the classroom. So, you know, just simple, basic plot, you know, just chilling out, you know, having a good time. Until the character Brady, which we talked about in a, about a few minutes ago, uh, let's just say that he couldn't hold, hold it in much longer, and he... He went to the restroom. He wet himself. And, <laughs> and, um, let's just say that you should have went to the restroom before class started. And then, an episode later, in Season 2, Episode 23, Dolan's, which is, I have to call it Clarence After Work. L- let's just put it that way. Okay. That's, that's the nickname I give the episode. But then, Clarence just wants to have some time alone because he's been through a lot and just wants to have some time to himself. But Chad and Mary decide to watch a movie where there is a man baby. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but... Uh... Well, this is just an animated character, but why does this character only have, like, one tooth and looks like uh, either a a single vampire fang? I don't know, but um, to say the least, uh, in Season 2, Episode 25, Space Race, this one is very easy to explain. And Percy basically said that that the spaceship that he's making with Belson... It's going somewhere, and it's probably one of the most iconic space jokes in history. And then in Chloris, Clarence basically gave a lengthy explanation to a to a woman named Chloris. And both of those names sound very alike. In a way. But yeah. we don't see what happens, obviously, because Clarence only explains it with vocals and words. So we don't see what happens. But Clarence and Sumo were playing musical chairs, and they sat on a piano. And then this one for you, this one's a field day for you, Season 2, Episode 35, Fishing Trip. And it's basically Clarence, Sumo, Jeff, Chad, and Sumo's dad all going on a fishing trip. But the ending is what really took us all by complete surprise. They did some sort of homage to The Simpsons by having Chad look sort of like Homer Simpson in some way. It came complete with Chad saying this. Basically, a full circle moment for that. And then we have Motel. And I chose this one because I call this one Mary Picked the Wrong Jacuzzi. It's kind of hard for me to explain a little bit. But to say the least, um, there's this character. I don't know if she has a name. I I don't think she has a name, but... There's a lot of unnamed characters on the show, so... But there is something that happens in the episode, and I'm just like, okay, Mary, you may want to get out of that jacuzzi. And then, okay, let's take a break from the cute, from the, from the comedy all of a sudden. Take a look at a cute moment from Season 2, Episode 39, Pizza Hero, where we get to see an adorable little Jeff. But this isn't the first time that we get to see him like this, because we also saw him in Jeff Wins, an episode from Season 1. But unfortunately, the cuteness doesn't last long because he starts freaking out over a pizza stain. And I'm like, dude, seriously? 
You could just wear a different shirt to replace it. It's kind of funny seeing him flip out while shaking the pizza in his in the air. <laughs> yeah, like he's like he's strangling it or something. And then we move on to the third and final season, season three, episode four, with Rock Show. And this one has a couple more unnamed characters, but we chose this one because they're sharing their love, which is a beautiful thing. But if you look behind them. They're just being a couple of pinch pocketers. And then afterwards, we have a bit of a stormy sleepover, and that was all over the place. That that thing was nuts. And then afterwards, we head on down to the pool to have a nice relaxing time. It pulls out for summer. I think it's revealed that Sumo is afraid of heights, because he has to jump off a massive diving board to prove that he's brave. But the thing is, he gets stuck on the diving board, and he has to find a way to escape. And, uh... Let's just say that we are going to have to censor this one. Now we're on to probably one of the most ridiculous episodes they ever made. Gilbin's Different. This one is like a triple whammy all in one or something, okay? Because Gilbin starts to mature. And you're thinking, okay, well, what's wrong with that? Okay, how do you put... How do you make an episode where Clarence is acting like a baby... In, in his freaking underwear, for Pete's sake. And he's literally eating baby food and watching a parody of Blue's Clues, for Pete's sake. And then afterwards, a few minutes later, Jeff dresses up as a baby, complete with a diaper on and all that stuff. And then just when you think the things can't get any crazier, Percy is in the bathtub, completely in his... <laughs> Let's just move on to a lovely piano solo in a sumo form. Oh my gosh, okay, it is not a calm piano solo anymore. <laughs> So, yeah, after all of that, um, we decide to uh, see a talent show, and I, I think it's, um, just as this whole side note, I think Mary is actually some, in some sort of a way, I think she may be a stand-up comedian in a way. But then guess who this is about? Brady! Again! Um, unfortunately, uh, he does this uh, questionable magic act. Sure enough, it happens again in a birthday suit. But then um, in Dog King Clarence, it, it starts out with Clarence. Um, it seems to be, I, I don't know if it's a casserole or whatever, but it's definitely questionable just because of the way it looks. It's, it's just like, it's more about the looks than anything. I think I just lost my appetite looking at that casserole. But then what do you think happened after that? I, I, w w we'll give you a second. He has to take care of... Of a dog. So what else do you expect? I don't know. Maybe Clarence dressing up like an old lady wearing women's underwear? And then in Trampoline, when Mary is in the middle of in a very bit of a scary situation because she accidentally breaks her leg in that one. But we don't know who this character is, but why would you fill up your gosh darn swimsuit with all that water? Okay. How many of these characters in Clarence are going to do weird stuff like this? Well, that's just the nature of the series and then we have video store which is actually the semi-series finale because because the next episode would be the true one that would end the series and we have video store and thankfully this one's more calm and fine yeah but this one's actually more interesting than anything because apparently they have a character from home movies in here yeah home movies has been on cartoon network for a very long time i guessing they got permission from the creator to like like, have his character appear in the episode or something? But thankfully, we're done with that list. But that, that was ridiculous. Yeah, but uh, what do you guys think? Do you have any, like, favorite odd moments from Clarence that we haven't talked about? Just just, just let us know in the comments or anything, because um, I think after all that chaos, um, I think I need to go lay down to something. So well, we'll, we'll see you later.